Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies. Today we're looking at this 4L60E transmission. This is probably going to be one of the last videos I do on the 4L60E transmission. It's getting kind of old. I've had this transmission for about five or six years and made a ton of videos on it after I bought it as a piece of junk on eBay as a built transmission and it wasn't. But I do have a ton of other videos on the vehicles that this transmission is in covering the evap systems the brakes all that other stuff that have to do with these trucks suvs vans all that stuff so chevy trucks suvs gmc trucks suvs uh, vans cadillac brakes evap systems obd2 codes maintenance all that stuff i have a ton of videos on the vehicles that this transmission's in in this video i'm going to show you how to test these shift solenoids in three different ways let me show you a couple things first this is your shift solenoid A on the driver's side. Passenger side is going to be your shift solenoid B or your 1, 2 and your 2, 3. These are the shift solenoids right here. They are super easy to get out and when you do start looking at this transmission if you're having problems, if you're having a shift solenoid code, it's not always the shift solenoids that are bad. It's sometimes the shift valves in the valve body on either one have gone bad, well, not bad, but they're stuck, they can't move, which is triggering a shift solenoid code. So to understand how this transmission works, I'm gonna post a link to a video in the description below that has, it's very, very useful on understanding the fluid schematics of this transmission. It's a guy I found that's super helpful, we're not affiliated with each other, he doesn't know me, I don't know him, but he has a very helpful channel. So I'm gonna post a link to his video below. And also, if you have a couple extra bucks, make sure you donate. I'm trying to buy a house here in California. It's super expensive. And if you have an opinion about that, let me know below too. Back to the subject at hand. Testing the shift solenoids. We're going to test the shift solenoid B or use the shift solenoid B to do the testing in this video. Let me explain a couple things to you real quick about this shift solenoid. When this shift solenoid does not have power from the computer, it will allow fluid to just leak by the solenoid into the pan through a couple little vents in the actual solenoid. Also, with the key on and engine off, you should have continuity on these two prongs, ground or power, either one. You should have something with the key on, engine off, you should have something here. It's controlled from the computer, and the computer at all times should have control from or on these wires. So if you have something where you're not having any continuity, you might have a problem with the wiring harness. Another thing I recommend, if you are taking this all apart to get to one of these two solenoids, you might as well get a whole solenoid kit and a wiring harness because the fluid for this transmission is not cheap. It's about 35 to 40 bucks for five quarts. And every time you drop the pan, you're gonna need at least five quarts to fill it back up. So I'd highly recommend you wanna take this all apart one time. That's why I'm gonna show you how to test everything. Again, I'm gonna use the shift solenoid B. To remove this, it is super easy. It's only held in by a little clip. Let's take it out real quick. This is really the only fluid that I recommend for this transmission. I would not get synthetic. This Merck Dex Valvoline is the best stuff that you can put in this transmission, in my opinion. You'll find a link in the description below for these as well. Now, of course, it's a lot easier for me since this transmission is here on the bench, but this is something that you could do to take this solenoid out while it is in the vehicle. You gotta drop the pan to get to this point, and like I said, get all the solenoids. You might as well have everything all together while you're dropping the pan one time. The manifold, all the solenoids, the harness, everything. Just have it together. Now let's remove shift solenoid B real quick. The only thing holding shift solenoid B and A into the valve body is one little clip. I'm using a hose tweaker tool or hose pick, whatever you want to call it. Gonna hook it and pull this little clip out. That's the little clip that holds it in place. Let's see if you could get... Uh, how can you see it? Let's see. That's the little clip that holds it in place right there. So that's the only thing holding it. Now that we have the clip removed, 
Just lift out or directly out on the solenoid and it should come right out of your transmission. Super easy, like I said. Now, when there's no power applied to this, when fluid flows through the valve body, fluid should flow out of these little vents on the solenoid. And then when the computer gives this thing power, the solenoid will shut, allow pressure to build up in the valve body, causing the valves in the valve body to move and making the shift action. So that's a little quick explanation. When you replace these and most other solenoids, make sure you get AC Delco only shift solenoids for this transmission. I've heard horror stories of using non AC Delco and having to do the job all over again and replacing them with AC Delco shift solenoids. There will be links in the description to purchase these as well as the AC Delco part numbers if you're going to go to a part store and you need to find the part numbers and get the right ones. So look for helpful links and part numbers in the description as well. There's going to be a ton of useful information down there. So that's just a little quick rundown of this. Now let's go ahead and test this thing. To do this test, I'm going to be using a 5 8 inner diameter hose, a braided hose so it doesn't collapse when I do the vacuum test. There is a oil catch pan on the ground to catch the transmission fluid when it drains out. Here's the shift solenoid that we took out. Now we're just going to put it in the bottom of this hose. Now when I test the solenoid, I'm going to be applying the 9 volts of power to these electronic prongs right here. You don't have to go in through the actual wire harness prongs. They go all the way through, so it makes it pretty easy to actually test this thing. Now the first test we're going to do is going to be the clicking test. 9 volt battery, this little tool I made. I might start making these and selling them because you could use this for a lot of situations like this and also testing EVAP solenoids such as the purge, the vent, a lot of things. So apply my connector. I'm going to have to hold it on because these don't actually connect to it. And now we're going to listen real good. So this is passing the 9 volt click test already. The second test we're going to do, and why I have this as a momentary switch is because if they touch, there's no power, so it makes it a lot easier, it makes the actual 9 volt battery last longer. Now the second test, going to apply some transmission fluid, again this is not something I would recommend filling up your transmission with, I just have this laying around and we're going to use it for testing purposes. I'm going to fill up this hose pretty quick. If all goes as planned, it's going to drain out of the little vents on the solenoid. And when I apply power to it, the solenoid will shut, which would allow the pressure to build up in the valve body and whatnot and stop the flow of the actual fluid going through the solenoid into the drain pan that we have going on right here. So let's fill it up real quick. Too much. So that flowing out like that is normal. If we apply power, I just applied power and you see how it stopped. I'm going to let the power off and it continues to flow. apply power and it stops again
and get you a little bit better view. Put some more in there. Apply the power. And you can see it just flowing out. Gonna give it some power. And it stops. Take the power off. And just flows. So this one is actually testing good. So far, so good. Now the last test that we're gonna do is to see if this thing will hold vacuum. We're using a vacuum pump and my cool little hose connector. Stick it in there as far as I can, get a nice little plug going on. And I'll apply vacuum. So now all the fluid is drained out. Got to make sure it's drained out to do this vacuum test. Does not hold vacuum. Now. Now, I'm going to apply power to the solenoid. And pull vacuum on it and see if it will hold vacuum in which it should put the connector into the hose and apply vacuum how am I gonna do all this at one time though No power applied, not holding vacuum. If you pump it really fast, it'll pull up the solenoid and seal it, which is not what we want to do. We'll just pump it pretty slow. Now we're going to apply pressure, I mean, apply power. And see how it's holding vacuum. Now if I let go of power, or turn the power off, it's still going to hold vacuum because the vacuum is holding the solenoid in the closed position right now. So it holding vacuum is pretty normal. What we want to see is that the vacuum not being held while there's no power. And then when you apply the power that the solenoid is shutting and actually holding the vacuum. When I first tried it, I had a couple of vacuum leaks right here and at the top where the hose was connected. So I had to double check everything because it wasn't working as planned. This one is testing all good though. Now we're going to reinstall the shift solenoid back into the valve body. It's super duper quick. Make sure your O-ring on your shift solenoid is good if you're going to reuse it. If it's not, replace it at this time. And again, if you're going to replace this shift solenoid, make sure you get an AC Delco shift solenoid and you'll find one of those in the link description below. And you'll find a link in the description below as well as some other helpful links to understanding There will be some other helpful links below as well as understanding the fluid schematics in this transmission and maybe some helpful links for the wiring harness and other solenoids uh, down there as well. If you have any questions, make sure you ask below. If you have any questions about this transmission, this is going to be one of the last videos I do on it, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to be answering questions. And also, I have a ton of videos on this transmission or the vehicles that this transmission in so the Chevy truck GMC trucks SUVs vans anything that this is in I probably have a video on the maintenance and care of the vehicle such as the evap system the brakes and stuff like that but let's go ahead and get this shift someone put back in super simple in the valve body 
grabbing my little clip probably can't see this too well like so connect the electrical connection like so and the solenoid is reinstalled in the transmission hopefully this video helped you out and if it did make sure you like subscribe and share also Comment below with the year make model of the vehicle that this video did help you on. Make sure you check out the video library for other helpful videos on the vehicles that this transmission is installed in. Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies and I'll see you on the next hopefully helpful video.